All right, this is a video to help you prepare your spreadsheet for lab this week. Um, what I have here is a Microsoft Excel uh, window pulled up, and I have uh, pasted in the instructions from your lab report. You've got a copy of this from eLearn, and this is what your spreadsheet should look like. And you'll be able to do a lot of your data collection and calculation right here in the spreadsheet if you want to. And the lab report, um, the lab instructions tell you a little bit about you can do this in the spreadsheet if you want to. So anyway, here we go. You need to put your name in cell 1 and that's because you're going to give me a copy of this and I'm going to need to know who you are. You can call it whatever you want. Notice I've put my name in the, the title of it too and that's fine. Um, then you need a cell for the barometric pressure in atmospheres. You're going to look it up during lab. It'll be similar to last week. You can call that anything you want. That's the atmospheric pressure, or that's the barometric pressure, whatever you want to call it. You need a cell for the moles of air in your bubble, which you will calculate during lab. You need a cell, oh, uh, columns for volume and temperature that you will collect in the lab. Let me come down one, and I'll pull it over here. I'm going to do columns of volume. You'll be getting this volume in milliliters and temperature, which you'll be getting in degrees Celsius. And you can put, um, you can make a, uh, a degree symbol in eLearn or in Excel. If you come up here to insert and then over on the far right symbol, it's one of these symbols here. I use it quite frequently, so it's in my recently used symbols and insert it, otherwise you have to kind of scroll through this and find it. So this is temperature and degrees Celsius. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make these columns wide enough for everything I just typed. Um, selecting it and then doing a double click on one of the dividers spreads it out. All right, um, My columns for volume and temperature that I'll be collecting in lab, let me make it a little bit pretty. I'm going to put borders on it. And then during lab, you can just type this in. You're going to be giving me the spreadsheet. You're going to keep it with your lab report. So if you want to just take the data here instead of writing it in your book, that's okay with me as well. All right. You'll need additional columns. We're down here for the calculations that you need. So we're going to need a temperature in Kelvin. We're going to need a 1 over the temperature, which would be a Kelvin to the minus 1. You can also do a superscript. Again, a little bit trick. That ne negative one needs to be superscripted. Um, that is a font issue. So if I bring up the font, I'm going to superscript it. All right, And that's just stuff that makes it pretty. It's not absolutely necessary. I need a column for the pressure of the air bubble in atmospheres. I need a column for the pressure of the water vapor. Um, at each temperature in atmospheres. And I need the natural log of that pressure. All right, and again, let me get these columns spread out. Uh, more space. And let me get my grid lines on. Okay. Um, you are going to be making a graph of the log P versus 1 over T. So you're going to be making a graph of two of the columns here, this log P column and this 1 over T. When we are in, in lab, we will have lots of time while we're waiting on data collection to uh, play around with the graphing features. So I'm not going to talk you through that right now. When you get to lab, essentially what you're going to do is you're going to um, Write down your value for your atmospheric pressure. You'll be able to put a value in here once you collect the data for your cold air bubble. And then while you are collecting data, you can either be typing numbers in here or you can be writing them in your notebook and then typing them later. What I'm going to put here in this temperature of Kelvin, I'm going to put a function. This column is the temperature in Celsius plus 273. So to enter that function, I type equals and then I select that cell, and then I write plus 273. We are going to be getting one decimal place on our thermometer, so I'm going to go ahead and use 273.15. 
Since there isn't a number in this column yet, it's just reading 273.15. If I grab this little cell down here at the bottom and drag it, it copies that formula into each of these, uh, but it refers to the cell right next to it. So as I type, like this might be 80, 75, 60, it'll automatically keep this column updated with the temperature in Kelvin. This column is going to be 1 over the temperature in Kelvin, so I'm going to type in the formula equals 1 divided by this column. And again, I'm going to do the little drag. And then again, as I type in my new values for temperature, these will become updated. Um, this is the pressure of the air bubble. This is PV equals NRT for the air bubble. There's my N for the air bubble. It's this moles. R is a constant. Um, T is the temperature in Kelvin divided by V to get P. You need to write that down because I, all I did was say it for you, but it's going to be equal to N, whatever moles of air is in this box, times 0.0821 for my R, times NRT, the temperature in Kelvin, that's this block, divided by V, now it's the volume in liters, and right now all I have is a volume in milliliters. I can make an additional column for volume in milliliters, or I can go ahead and divide by this and then multiply by 1,000, which is like taking my milliliters divided by 1,000. Let me do it this way first. I can take this value divided by 1,000 to get liters, but notice I put parentheses around it. What I was getting ready to do is not use the parentheses and instead say times, but you can do it either way. You do want to confirm once you start typing numbers in that this is calculating the P of the air bubble correctly. When you drag this down, it does something really weird because that block B3, all right, the block B3, which is your moles of air, you need B3 in every single one of these. And notice it went to B4 here. It's going down. So here's a little Excel trick. When I make this um, formula, since every single thing copied below it needs B3 as well, if I put a dollar sign, dollar sign in front of the B and the 3, now when I copy it down, every single, watch me as I scroll down, every single thing with a B3 will stay the same, but then it'll go and it'll grab the correct values for temperature and volume. I'm scrolling down. That dollar sign, dollar sign notation says that's a static block. All right. So now, again, back to the pressure of water. This is going to be from Dalton's Law. These, this atmospheric pressure in this block is equal to the pressure of air plus the pressure of water. So if I want the pressure of water, that is my total pressure, whatever this value is in atmosphere. If it's not in atmosphere in this block, you're going to have to calculate it, minus the numerical value for the pressure of air. Um, and that means I need to put the atmospheric pressure in atmosphere to go grab it. So I'm pretending like block B2 has my atmospheric pressure. And I need to do the dollar signs here because I don't want that block to move. Um, it is going to come down and take the pressure of air at each one lower. And then the natural log of P, last one, equals the natural log function for Excel is LN. So I'm going to do the natural log of this value and just copy them down. Now when I get ready in lab, all I've got to do is fill in with my numbers and then the rest of the columns will be calculated. You do want to double check, spot check some of these and make sure they're calculating them correctly, but otherwise that will take care of the calculations for you. And you won't have to show those in your notebook if you're turning in the spreadsheet which has the formulas in them.